Recently, Alabama, Arkansas, Texas, and Missouri have proposed legislation making it a felony to provide gender-affirming care to trans youth. The punishment for providing this care can be up to 10 years in prison. These bills go against the consensus of almost every major medical association in the West. For example, the American Medical Association, the American Nurses Association, the American Academy of Family Physicians, and the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, as well as many, many more, support this care for children that need it. I sat down with Mia Lauder, the Community Engagement Specialist at the Trans Health Northampton Clinic in Florence, to find out more about what gender-affirming care looks like for trans youth and the side effect that these bills will have on the transgender community as a whole. In terms of the states where they're actually being passed, I think one of the things that we're seeing here at Trans Health is we've been in contact with a number of different families that are actually moving out of these states of places like Arizona and Texas. That's fleeing your community, your job, home, school, forcing children to undergo a puberty that is going to lead to trauma that is going to last for a very long time. Um, and it's, it's very scary to talk about, but it is really, you know, lives are at stake when you're talking about mental health outcomes that are that severe. So when we talk about what gender affirming care is, I think the common misconception is people immediately jump to things like surgery, hormones, blockers, and stuff like that. But at the most basic level, gender affirming care is really just using the correct name and pronouns for someone who comes into the doctor's office or wherever they're going for medical care. We have tons of patients that haven't been to doctors in years, and that's because the distress of going somewhere and being misgendered, you know, not using the correct name, uh, basically not being seen for who you really are, that distress is so high that people go so far to avoid, you know, essential health care appointments to avoid it. Massachusetts is not um, exempt from anti-trans narratives or anti-trans rhetoric. Um, and that we need to, even though we do have statewide protections here, that the work still needs to, it needs to continue, right? It doesn't, doesn't mean that we're done. Um, we need to con still continue to have uh, conversations, make sure people are informed so that they can make informed decisions. Uh, taking away also, essentially that's what these bills are. These bills are basically trying to say that People aren't who they say they are. Taking away information from people is not going to make them change who they are. Many of these bills have already been passed. While Missouri, for example, is attempting to raise the minimum age to receive this care to 25. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.